Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Louisville. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen, and we're in the quarterfinals here. Huey Jensen on the right-hand side of your screen. That is Huey Jensen on the right-hand side of your screen. On the left-hand side, it's John Stern from Canada. He's playing for a team face-to-face -face games. We need to make sure that <coughs> we'll get those names updated as soon as possible here. Elvish Mystic on the play, turn one from John Stern. That has to be just the ideal turn one for him. Definitely. I mean, it's it's the one drop in his deck. No now, turn two play no here. No turn two at all. But that means he probably has a Boon Seder in hand. Okay. So he can flash that in on end step, start delivering the beats. But let's see what, uh, what Huey's got lined up here. Well, he's going to play an untapped hollowed fountain, so he's got something. And here's the Boon Seder. And it resolves. I don't know if uh, Huey's even running Syncopate in his deck but he is made sure to leave up mana for his Azorius Charm. Also, he can have Doomblade, something along those lines. Yeah, and there are a ton of different cards that he can have in that spot. An but Azorius Charm. Mm -hmm. Great. And Domri Raid now. Wow. John Stern knows that he's going to hit. He gets to draw that Boon Seder again with Domri Raid. Now he's going to do some scrying. What a great swing of, of, of events there for John Stern. Yeah, he's got to be thrilled with that turn of events. Domri Raid is able to pressure the game in ways that creatures cannot. It makes things very awkward for Huey. Yeah, Huey's going to need a Detention Sphere to deal with that before it gets to seven counters and can ultimate. Because when a Domri Raid ultimates mm -hmm. against the control deck, every single one of John's creatures becomes a huge threat, gets haste. It's just everything that he wants in this type of control matchup. Yeah, interestingly, it's not even just about finding that... Uh, detention sphere, right? Because, I mean, even if you get it before it ultimates, he's already plussed it twice for value. He just drew a, a, an Elvish Mystic off of it. Your opponent can just have a whole grip of cards that you also has to contend with, and that's after you get rid of the Domri Raid. Very true. So Domri Raid doing serious work here for John Sturm. And let's see what he comes up with for, for his turn. Now, he's got to be super aware of Supreme Verdict as Huey's only one mana away from casting it. So he's not going to want to play into it too much, but right now he's well positioned not to. He's going to yeah, play I mean, a Boon Seder during his main phase to play around Dissolve, pass the turn back. Yeah, so I, he's happy to play the Boon Seder main phase because he doesn't want to play into a Dissolve. Mm -hmm. And if Huey does decide to go ahead and use Supreme Verdict, then his Domery's going to get to tick up to six, and he will likely get to cast a giant four or five drop. And then if Huey doesn't have... Uh, a detention sphere in hand, then he's going to be forced to... Oh, okay. So, Hero's Downfall dealing with Domri. Now, Huey's still under a lot of pressure here on the board. Need to tap all his mana to do that. Yep. So, Huey's taking a line such that he's going to take care of Domri Raid with Hero's Downfall now and hope that John Stern is forced to commit something else to the board here so that he can get maximum value from his Supreme Verdict. Oh, but bad news for Huey as John Stern just casually casts another Domri Raid, pluses it, and yeah, hits another creature. I mean, sure, his last two hits have been Elvish Mystics, but those are cards that he's not going to draw off the top now and slow him down, so he's keeping that velocity flowing. And, by the way, cracking in there for five damage as well. All right, so send the turn back, and is, is, it, is it Supreme Verdict o'clock here? I believe it is. There it is. Supreme Verdict hits, takes down the three creatures, and we're going to still see a land drop here from Huey. So he's, he's working towards the goal, but unfortunately he's in a position where Domri Raid is once again pressuring him. Quick update from the side tables. Brian Brondwin up a game over Brad Nelson pretty quickly with a lot of pack rats. Pack rat, just about the best card in the mono black mirror. Speaking of one of the best cards in this matchup, really nice here. Storm Breath Dragon is going to get in there for four. It's going to drop Huey down to eight, and it means... That, you know, that Huey now has to react to the Storm Breath Dragon. Let's see what he comes up with here. Another Supreme Verdict, and that's taken basically all of his mana for the turn. So now another play from John Stern can just keep the beats incoming. And plus, you mentioned it before, Domri Raid ticking up towards that ultimate. Domri Raid's going to be on six this turn. And, of course, under no threat right now. All right, finally, uh, John Stern misses with Domri Raid. Plays his land. Does he have a haste creature? 
that he can use right now to get in a bunch of damage. Remember, Huey's all the way down to eight here, and he's starting to get up into... All right, so he's going to play a Boon Seder on his Elvish Mystic, play them both on his main phase, and ship it back. And that's extremely powerful, too, because now even if Huey is able to deal with this five-power creature on John's side of the table, he's still going to have to deal with a four-power guy, and that's still a two-turn clock for him. That's right, and Domri Raid now is going to be at seven after he gets used this turn, so things are looking pretty rough here for Huey as uh, John Stern has been able to hit from multiple different angles here. And this is exactly how this matchup should play out in John Stern's mind. This is how he wrote it up. They're trying to do stuff, they're struggling, and even though they can deal with each of these creatures that John Stern is playing, it ends up not mattering because he's dealing them four damage with the creature before they deal with it. Speaking of four damage with the creature, he pluses Domri and immediately <laughs> gets another Storm Breath Dragon, so he is threatening lethal here. It looks like that Storm Breath might be resolving, and both of them hit the red zone. And is this enough to keep him alive? One, two, three, four, five. That's going to put him up to uh, 13. So yes, it is, as he's taking nine here. But he's going to need some pretty sweet stuff off of that Sphinx's Revelation in order to untap and be able to survive here. Remember, Domri Raid is now threatening to go ultimate. And along with that, there's lethal threats. There's two different lethal threats on the table as well. So things looking pretty ugly here for Huey Jensen. So um, in our other matches here, it uh, looks like Alex Sittner's up a game, and uh, Ton Anderson is down a game. Against Andrew Beckstrom. Beckstrom on the side table, yeah. What is that? Is that a Domri emblem that might be joining the, the fray here pretty quickly? I believe it is. He's just getting it out just in case. <laughs> Huey's still tanked out here about what can he do to get out of this mess. He's facing two lethal threats and a Domri Raid that's about to go ultimate. He does have seven mana at his disposal currently and a full grip of cards after that Sphinx's Revelation. So how does this go? So he's going to need a Supreme Verdict. That's the, that's the first ingredient mm -hmm. to the recipe for victory. All right. So he has brought his brew to a simmering boil. Fires off Supreme Verdict. First ingredient in. Now what? Now he's going to need another spot removal spell to deal with this Boon Seder. And it looks like he has a Hero's Downfall and a Doom Blade. Unfortunately, he is in such an awkward spot here. Because if he uses the spot removal spell on the Boon Seder, then, then he doesn't die this turn unless, <coughs> unless John casts basically any creature in his deck outside of an elf. Yeah, and, and John doesn't have many elves left in his deck either. If That's John right. has any creature with two or more power here, he wins. If John has two different creatures with one power, he wins. Mm -hmm. It looks like John has a Sylvan Caryatid and two lands in hand, though. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so if he ultimates Domri Raid, then Boon Sater gets killed in response. If he just attacks and Boon Seder dies, then he can keep working with Domri Raid. He can ultimate it. He can tick it up. Well, he, c he cannot pass the... He needs to ultimate the Domri Raid this turn. Okay, yes. he does it first. So ultimate on the stack, and we're going to see a Doom Blade hit this Boon Seder. But that will be the last Doom Blade hitting anything on the side of John yep. Stern. And here's a carry added. <laughs> Not exactly ideal here. He's like, he gets haste, go. Yes, haste but, and double strike. <laughs> but now, so, so Huey Jensen has found a way to get to his untap and draw here. Wow, that's a huge draw for him there. That he is. draws a far and away. Um, the far away, though, the Sylvan Caryatid oh, is actually you're right. incredible far away insurance. That's right. Because oh, so all brutal. of his creatures have hexproof now, thanks to Domri Raid's emblem. Yeah. And... The Sylvan Caryatid can just be sacrificed. He's not like he's going to be able to target something with a bounce half. So brutal. Um, t just a quick update on what um, Domri Raid's uh, emblem does. Creatures you control have double strike, trample, hexproof, and haste. So 
they become all lethal outside of a couple of mana creatures here, basically. And here's an Aetherling. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see what he draws. It's a forest off the top. John Stern plays his land for the turn and just has to pass it back. He is absolutely at the mercy of the top of his deck here. He doesn't need much. He doesn't. And here's Aetherling hitting the red zone. John Stern deciding if he wants to actually just throw that carry at it in front. But, you know, the far and away situation is definitely something, you know, there's also Devour Flesh in the format. I, I don't know if, if Huey has it or if he knows that he has it, but it's something he's got to consider. Yeah, I, I think that they've exchanged deck list already. Oh, do you? Yes. And um, Huey, if he's attacking with the Aetherling and not making it unblockable, it's pretty clear to John that Huey must have far away in hand. Okay. So Divination into Divination for Huey Jensen. I see an Elspeth and a Jace now. Jace is another way that he can interact with the... Uh, the Domri's emblem potentially, although that comes down to which creature it happens to be. Yep. He wants to... Wow, is he going to run out the Jace here? All right, so this means that Aetherling will stay tapped. He will not have a blocker here. So he is going to live and die by the top of John Stern's deck here because he is now completely tapped out. So John is going to have a clean draw step here to kill his opponent. It's not going to take much. Huey Jensen's only at three. He played, Huey already played a land for the turn, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, so that, so that means that Aetherling is going to stay tapped. It is. He passes it back. Can John hit it? Draws his card. He hits Pelucranos, and it's good enough here. It is. As John Stern takes the first game of this quarterfinal match here at GP Louisville, that was the close one. Yeah, and Huey knows that you know all the small creatures that are in John Stern's deck aren't in his deck anymore. Mm. Uh, plusing uh, Jace isn't going to do anything because there's only one Elvish Mystic left in John's library. Uh, and he's at three. Mm -hmm. He can take the hit. It's yeah. not the end of the world. He needs to find answers to what's happening on the board at that exact moment. And... He just needs to pass in there with Aetherling. He needs to get him dead. He has two turns for John Stern to brick. So the question, though, is do you bash with Aetherling and then leave the mana up so that you can blink it and then have it on defense? Because, like, it wouldn't have done anything in that position because Pelucranos is just too big. It has double strike and trample. It just goes right over the Aetherling. Yeah. But if it was something smaller, maybe not. But there isn't much that's smaller. There's not. There's scavenging ooze, but he had plenty of mana, uh, presumably, to, to, to make that big enough. Yeah, the scavenging ooze would have been massive. Yeah. It would have been bigger than the Pelucranos, even. Uh -huh. um, I guess Colonian Tusker would have been a card that could have affected that in some way or another. Okay. So, you know, maybe. I, I don't know. Like that, that's, but, but clearly, I think if you were to just list out the creatures that John had uh, that he could draw there, you would probably see that either all or almost all of them would just kill Huey Jensen, even with the Aetherling tap. So he's just like, I'm going to keep the momentum rolling forward here. All right, so let's get a quick update here. Rich is uh, doing good work on our back tables here. Beckstrom, 1-0 currently. He began the tournament with a bye and then two losses, and he's won 12 in a row since. So good for him wow. to make it in the top eight. That is an insane run. Brian Brown to win is 2-0, the winner over Brad Nelson. Brad had Thoughtseize. He took Underground Connections with it over Pack Rat, but he died to the Pack Rat when BBD drew a Mutavault to avoid a Devour Flesh. So That's rough. Tight, tight stuff there. Again, you, you mentioned it. These guys tested and helped build together. These two plus uh, Todd Anderson, one of them had to fall, and it turns out it was Brad Nelson. But, man, still huge props to Brad Nelson. If you go back over the last four to five standard GPs here in North America, he has dominated them. Yeah, he has top, top aided four of the last five standard Grand Prix in North America, and he has top aided three out of the last three. Unbelievable. Standard Grand Prix in North America. And the only miss he had yeah. was a top 16. He lost playing for top eight in that tournament. He said he lost for playing for top eight twice. He had two winning ins, and he wasn't able to quite close it out. That's how close he was in that one, too. So much respect there to Brad Nelson for his 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 dominance and in, in also standard. congratulations this is a qualification for Brian Braun to win for Pro Tour Valencia mm. and Brian Braun to win uh, he had qualified for Pro Tour Theros 
in Dublin. I, I had the opportunity to work with him. Great guy. Did uh -huh. a lot of work. Um, somebody who has potential to be a really, really great name in the game. Okay. And here he is chaining Pro Tours together with this top four Grand Prix win. All right. Now we've got uh, our upcoming webcast schedule in front of you here. Grand Prix Antwerp, modern, October 26th and 27th. Grand Prix Valencia, that's Theros Limited. That's November 9th and 10th. Our European coverage team is going to be on both of those events. I know I'll be watching. Rich Hagen will be there. He's excited about it. Uh, GPDC is Legacy. For you Legacy fans, this is your time to watch Legacy at basically the highest level that it gets played uh, these days. Yes. Uh, November 16th and 17th in Washington, D.C. That's going to be a fun one. Grand Prix Albuquerque is standard. Everybody's favorite. That's November 23rd and 24th. Back to Europe for Grand Prix Vienna in Austria. That's standard. November 30th to December 1st. Again, our, our European coverage team will be on that one. And Grand Prix Dallas-Fort Worth. I think that's the last major event of the year. I, I, I think it is. That's December 7th and 8th. It's also standard. So a lot of great magic as we close out our year. All right. So we have back down in our feature match area here, William Jensen down one game to John Stern. John Stern able to have really a strong draw there, keep the pressure going, petered out. He had a draw step to hit it, and he did. Pelucranos as a 5-5 double strike trample haste hexproof somehow managed to finish off that game. <laughs> Could have been bigger than a 5-5, too, if he'd I mean, wanted. Does he eat more than the world when he's in that mode? I, it's just... Yes, he, he's, he's an actual Death Star. He's just an yeah. actual world destroyer. <laughs> yeah, so... I think you, you, you said it well, JVL, exactly how John Stern wrote it up, right? Hitting from yeah. different angles, keeping the pressure going, being a mana ahead, uh, all of these things contributed to his win there. Yeah, and you know he did get flooded there a bit. He and did. yes, he, he was hitting a lot of cards off Domri, which is, he was hitting more than he should have even, mathematically. But he was just hitting Elvish Mystics. And then in between, the draw steps were just lands. So... Even without drawing any of his main deck Mistcutter Hydras, he, he did draw two dragons, but now post-board, he's going to have more haste action. He's going to be better suited for this matchup than he was even in game one. And John Stern has to feel good about being up a game against William Huey Jensen now, in this match. Yes, absolutely. Now we have to figure, though, that Huey is going to have a potent sideboard plan for what's ultimately you know, kind of a... Kind of a big, dumb creature deck, right? I mean, it's not yeah. like, you know, I mean, these are hasty creatures. They're efficient. They're good. But this is what the control deck should thrive on, right? Just destroying creatures? I can do that. Yeah, I can kill creatures no problem. Yeah, so, it, and, and you got to figure that he's got even more ways to do that. But coming in out of creatures the sideboard. are the issue. That is a big issue, yeah. All right, so we're off to the races here. Temple of Deceit for Huey's going to kick things off. And once again, we see that turn one Elvish Mystic so important for John Stern. It's his only turn one accelerator. And uh, it looks like he could have a turn two Domri raid, but we saw him get a little tricky last time and not fire off his Domri raid. Instead, he decided to play a Boon Seder. Let's see what he decides here. He does have a Domri raid in hand and a red mana source, so he's got that option if he wants it. But I don't think he, he wants to play it into, well, I don't know, negate? What is he worried about here? Negate, probably. Um... And it would seem odd for Negate to be sideboarded in, but it looks like it, it was sideboarded in. We see Negate there in, in Jensen's hand. And All right, here's a thought. See, so I think that Domri Raid is going to get nabbed here. But that being said, it's too, it's too uh, life loss for, for Huey here, and John Stern did bolster his board. He attacked for one and played a Colonian Tusker, and you see he's got a pretty nice hand, though when you take that Domri Raid, it gets a bit worse. Yeah, I mean, with the negate in Huey's hand, I think Huey's likely to take the uh, Miscutter Hydra. It okay. is a haste creature. Uh, I think that's telling that he has Supreme Verdict in hand. Uh, but he does not have white mana, so that's going to be yeah, a pretty big issue here because Supreme Verdict, it's a tall order, double white. To and he has Supreme none Verdict right here. now, so definitely Correct. not next turn. So, oh, Domri Raid. Negated. Yes. Are you going to take four now, Huey? You do. And now the path is clear for John Stern to just start committing stuff to the board because he knows that his opponent is down on white mana. It's going to be really interesting to see here if Huey plays a white mana source. He drew one. 
He did draw one. He drew a godless shrine. He plays it and passes. Now this makes things a lot more interesting for John Stern because now he's got to face a kind of tough decision of like, well, does he have another one? He would have played one earlier, right? Yeah, and he <laughs> might just be thinking he's getting like leveled by yes, a Hall of Famer or absolutely. something like that. Because I've, I've definitely waited to play my first white source to mm -hmm. get my opponent to play into a Supreme Verdict when I have a hand that right. has enough to keep me alive until then and my opponent's not pressuring me enough to kill me. But it looks like John Stern feels comfortable enough to say, no, I don't think you're trying to level me, bro. <laughs> I'm going to play my other Tusker and, and I like keep that. the big pressure on you. Huey draws a hero's downfall for the turn. I believe he has another Temple of Deceit in hand here. And that looks like a watery grave. He's going to play a tapped watery grave, so John Stern now knows that he doesn't have that second white source of mana, so green light time. But one of these Tuskers very likely to die. Now, if he can play a dragon or something here, though, it can, he can put tons of pressure on Huey. It looks like he's lining up f four mana for a Xenagos the Reveler. Yeah, and... And it resolves, so this is an awesome one. Now, this, again, look at all the pressure, because it's easy to say, well, Huey's got Hero's Downfall, no problem. But what he's got to kill a bunch of different threats here. Xenagos is a big issue. The Tuskers will kill him in two turns if he doesn't take care of them. Yeah, I mean, he is, he's attacking for lethal damage right now. Three, six, seven, eight, nine damage right now. So, first order of business, kill a Tusker. Yep. Wow, this deck from John Stern really has, you know, it, it, it's nothing new as far as concept goes. We've seen these type of decks be popular uh, before the rotation, but it still works, it seems. Yeah, I mean, it's a powerful strategy with the way magic cards work now. Um, the control decks are going to become more popular, and just playing a lot of strong haste creatures against control strategies is a recipe for success. All right. And we've seen it time and time again. So... Hero's Downfall hits, necessarily hits one of the Colonian Tuskers. And we're going to see White Mana Source Supreme Verdict here at least. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, he doesn't have it. And John Stern is going to advance to the semis. Huey Jensen shows him that he did in fact have a Supreme Verdict in hand, but was not able to cast it thanks to those mana issues. John Stern correctly reading the situation, saying there's no way he has that other white source. I'm going for it, playing out his hand and uh, being rewarded for it. Yeah, there, I mean, Huey drew the white source he needed on the very last turn, so he could have cast Supreme Verge on the last turn, but it would have put him down to one, and then he was just dead on board to Xenagos. All right, I've got a, an update from our side tables. Again, we've already told you, Brad Nelson, he 